Hi and welcome to RICS, and in this video, I'll walk you through how to set yourself up on the RICS assessment platform, the functions and steps you need to take to submit your submission. If you require any additional support, our global team is happy to help you in the journey to become ASOC RICS. To access the RICS assessment platform, you will first need to have an RICS website account set up. You would have done this when you completed your online enrollment application. The platform will be accessible to all current enrolled candidates and you will receive an email confirming you are a candidate member and also provide you with a link to access the platform. We recommend that you save this link, assessment.rics.org, to ensure it's easily accessible on your device as this is where you'll be saving your documentation and updating your details regarding your submission and submitting it for assessment. When you log in for the first time, you will notice within the platform a section of colored boxes in the middle of the screen. This is your progress tracker and it has been intentionally developed to help you quickly identify items you haven't started in red, the items that you have started that need completing in orange and green showing that you have completed. The aim is to turn the whole progress tracker green for each section to ensure that you can successfully submit when you're ready for the upcoming assessment dates based on your region and assessment type. RSES have made all the assessment dates for the current year available on the website. Under Join RSES, you can navigate to Assessments Information. Here you will read the FAQs and other resources. And if you scroll down, you can click on your region. And a little bit further down, we actually do have a few examples of past submissions. Now, when reviewing the dates of assessment, please note that each region have different assessment dates and your platform will be linked to your region specifically based on your employment, region of work and route to membership. It's important to note that if you do move country during your time as a candidate, we recommend that you gain an additional six to 12 months of local experience before submitting for assessment to familiarize yourself with the new region, local norms, laws, and legislation. Now, if it's your first time logging into the platform, you would have noticed that while most of your items in the tracker were red as not started, you could have had one green box showing that the counselor selection has been completed and you would have done this at enrollment stage. If you didn't select a counselor or your counselor is showing as red or blank at the top of the screen, you can easily add this. You will be required to select and have a counselor who will support you and approve your submission. To select a new counselor, if you navigate to your profile and select edit profile, that page will load. On this page, you can add your counselor's email associated with the RICS account or member number. You can click look up, select the counselor and save. Your new counselor will be notified to accept this request, but you should also reach out to them that you have completed this stage and have access to the platform. This may also be a great time to discuss RICS with them your progression and plan of action. As your counselor has agreed to support you, they expect you to have questions, ask for their advice and take action to completing the submission requirements. Now on your RICS profile page, you can also update your pathway and change your personal details, such as an address, phone number, title, honors, or even your email address. Please ensure that you do save this. At the top of the screen, you can navigate using the tabs to add your employment. And remember, you must add all your professional career relevant to the pathway. With your employment, you should also consider providing a summary to give further context about your roles and responsibilities. This helps to support your application, allowing the assessors to understand the type of responsibility, achievement, and also milestones. You can use the tabs to also as well add academic and recognize professional qualifications. As part of your submission requirements, you also must add a profile picture. The picture you are selecting must be real, in color, and not edited. Once you do have a photo, please upload it, adjust it, and save. As a general hint, if you wish to navigate back to the homepage, simply clicking on the RICS logo at the top of the left-hand side will take you back there. On the home page, there is also a help icon below your progress tracker. This help icon will also appear on every page and includes the contact details of your local RICS office, along with the user guides, accessible candidate tutorials such as this one, and relevant pathway guide information. Please note that each route to membership, while similar, will have criteria for your particular assessment type and the timeframe if applicable. 
your route to membership will be on your profile page and it'll be recommended to download your candidate guide to explain more. Please, in your own time, read the full candidate guide to understand how to write and structure towards the summary of experience, case study, word limitations, and inclusions you can write about towards your declared experience. All candidates will also need to download their pathway guide, which will show you the competencies you'll be writing about towards your experience and the choices of selecting. You can download this within the RICS assessment platform under the help section or on the RICS website. Please download and only use the associate version of the selected pathway if on the associate assessment. When downloading this, the guide will list out all the competencies relevant to your pathway. The mandatory competencies are all common to all pathways and classified as interpersonal and professional business skills. Your technical competencies are specific to your pathway and should be selected based on your current role and experience. Your pathway guide is also a great tool. It will list out the description and requirements with examples of activities and tasks to help you write and demonstrate how your experience meets the requirements of the technical and mandatory competencies of your chosen sector pathway. It also can create a framework for your future career progression and skills, providing direction on new skills or exposure to work and projects that you might need to gain to complete. Once you have decided with your counselor on the competencies, you can complete the competency selected section within your platform. You can click the navigation bar on the left hand side of the screen, click on competencies and then click and choose competency selector. The mandatory competencies will appear first. As these are common to all pathways, these cannot be edited. So please click save and continue to move on to the next section. Candidates will need to select the required core competencies. This section must be completed correctly before proceeding to the optional competencies. As an example, the pathway selected here is quantity surveying and construction. So it will only show the relevant competencies for this pathway. If you make a mistake with your selections, a validation alert will appear in red to tell you how to fix the selection. Once you have selected all the competencies correctly, you'll be able to review and double check the selections being made. There is an edit button there if you wish to make any changes. To turn this green within your progress tracker, you need to ensure that this section is saved. For all candidates, you must be using the official RICS templates to complete the summary of experience and case study. You can access this page by choosing either the navigation bar on the left hand side or by clicking on the colored box in the progress tracker. Please note, you will need to download both the summary of experience and case study template. When you are happy that it is complete or you're requiring a review or feedback from your counselor, you can click browse and upload a copy into the platform. The platform will only accept PDF versions though. Click on the request review to submit this to your counselor for approval or feedback. Please note that clicking the request review will lock the functionality of uploading a new version until your counselor has given feedback or approval of your documentation. We recommend prior to submitting or requesting reviews of your documentation that you connect with your counselor and advise when you are planning on submitting these items and require their assistance. This is all part of great communication skills and ensure timely action is taken on their behalf to assist and support you in this journey. At this point, I would also like to drop a reminder that if you are using plans, drawing, pictures, graphs to support your case study in the appendices, please bear in mind the size and how readable these will appear to your assessment panel when they are receiving the submission online. Try and keep everything relevant, clear and concise. Do also know that when you do decide to submit for assessment, the platform will pull all the information from your profile, such as your employment, the templates, CPD, and other information saved into the platform. RICS expects that you write everything professionally and due care is taken regarding all your grammar and spelling. You can download and see how this information will appear by selecting preview submission, which is below your progress tracker on the platform homepage. All candidates must successfully complete the professionalism module and test. The test can be reached within the navigation bar or by clicking on the colored box on your progress tracker. This will link and take you directly to our online academy and you'll be logged in automatically. If you do need to log into the system, it's the same email and password for the platform. For assessment purposes, you are required to complete and pass this test. And you may retake this test every 24 hours if required. 
the test must be completed within a prior 12 months period before applying for assessment. Once completed, it may take up to one hour to reflect in the platform. As a regular action item that you will need to complete, it is continued professional development or CPD that must be logged within the platform. CPD ensures that you continue learning and improving your skills and knowledge throughout your working life. This can include attending conferences, taking courses, or reading independently. It's up to you what you decide and what kind of CPD you want to do, as long as it's relevant to your job and pathway. All candidates must complete the minimum hours required by their assessment and period. You can log all these activities from either the navigation bar on the left hand side or by clicking the colored box on your progress tracker. Click on new and you can enter the new entries. You will need to give the entry a description, select the status, whether it's planned or something that you've already completed, a date and how many hours you'll be claiming for that activity. You will then need to select whether it is formal or informal, remembering that a minimum of 50% of activities need to be formal. Please remember for those activities that you have added as planned, you will need to go back in and select completed for the platform to calculate those hours towards your submission requirements. The CPD homepage will show an overview of the hours recorded and the list of activities for that calendar year. All CPD hours will be calculated on a rolling period and only completed CPD hours appearing in the prior 12 months period will be calculated at the date of submission for assessment. You can read more about this within your candidate guide. Once you have completed the criteria for your assessment type and any timeframe requirements along with turning your progress tracker green, your counselor will need to approve you for the final assessment. This is your approved by counselor. Before requesting this final approval from your counselor, please take the extra care in regards to how professionally written your documents are. While the counselor is there to support you, this is your submission and your attention to details regarding the word limits, grammar and spelling is all the candidate's responsibility. On the RICS website, we have an additional step where you can download a checklist to ensure you have completed and reviewed your submission. This will be found on the RICS assessments information page and by clicking apply for assessments to provide you more details on this process. And if you scroll down, you'll be able to see the checklists. When you notice that all your submission requirements are showing as completed and you're ready to submit for assessment, the final action is the declaration. Only once everything else is completed and showing in green, will this be accessible to you. If you are unable to proceed, you will need to contact the RICS regulation team for further information on your next steps. Once the declaration is completed and the date of assessment window is opened, you'll be able to apply for the next assessment window online. RICS cannot accept any early or late submissions. Once everything is completed for the criteria of your assessment type, on your homepage, you'll find a banner in the middle of the screen stating, please apply for your final assessment here, and it will give you a date when the application period is ending. Click on that button to continue and follow the steps to successfully submit. The next screen that will appear is the final assessment screen and there is a variety of information that you need input. The information that will show on the screen will be relevant to your assessment type and pathway as well as your country and location. So please bear in mind that on the screen this is a tutorial and it may differ from your screen but it will give you an idea of the type of information that we ask for. Firstly is the international experience. If your case study includes any work undertaken outside your assessment location please click to add the country. You can pick more than one if required. And remember to click submit. If your case study is based on the country of your assessment location, you can leave this blank. The next is special considerations. If there is anything you wish to declare to RICS that may impact your assessment, the RICS needs to inform the assessors about and put in place reasonable adjustments. This is where you'll highlight it. Please remember to click submit on every box you complete information for on the final assessment page. Once you have filled all the details on the screen, you can click on download your final assessment document. This will give you a PDF document which pulls together all the information that will be presented to your assessment panel. This is your final opportunity to read and check the submission file. If you haven't already done so, show it to your counselor, show it to your supervisor, to your family and friends to make sure they have proofread it and there's no spelling or issues or grammatical mistakes. If you do find something within the templates that need to be changed, you will need to have this re-approved by a counselor. 
RICS will not be able to edit or load new information after you have submitted it for assessment. So importance on planning and ensuring you can submit is crucial and we recommend it not leaving it to the last day or final hours to avoid missing out. Once you have checked your submission documents, please remember to submit this, confirming that these are the documents you wish to include for assessment. Please note, if you do not download your submission for checking, the final step will not be unlocked. This final step is to confirm that you wish to submit for assessment. You will need to slide the button or click on it to turn purple. Under the header, confirm that you wish to submit for assessment. This is very important. If you do not click to confirm your submission will not be accepted. A red box will appear to tell you that once you've submitted your work, it will become locked and unable to make amendments. Once you click submit, it cannot be undone. A padlock will then appear on your screen, meaning nothing can be edited or changed. The banner on your home screen will then change to show that you have submitted and that the local office will be in touch with you. This concludes how to use and submit for assessment as an RICS candidate via the assessment platform. We wish you all the best in becoming ASOC RICS.